<laughs> but again, this is so stunning. I want to strip all the foliage off, so I'm really just seeing that little, little exclamation point. Uh, and I like to add movement to my arrangement. This really has the sense of dance and playfulness. So we'll just add about five of these and be done. And they can even be up higher than the, than the scabiosa. It's like picking the ones that have the most interesting shape, personality. <laughs> I was working on this book, The 50 Mile Bouquet, is that um, I was really advocating for seasonal flowers and using flowers um, when they're at their peak, just the way we buy food when it's at its peak. When we want that heirloom tomato off the vine, that ex exemplifies summer for us rather than shrink wrapped in, uh, in January with no flavor. So uh, I had a lot of pushback from a lot of editors and publishers saying, well, that's fine if you, you know, live in Santa Barbara or something, I and mean, you can have flowers year-round, but what about, uh, you know, colder climates? And I, it, was, it was November, and I thought, well, I know I can get a, a, an arrangement every week for a year out of my own garden or from flower farmers that I know. I'm going to show them. I'm going to do this uh, bouquet a week project. I started November 1st, which was kind of bad. Uh, picked it. But you know, if you can get through winter with this this mission, then you really are going to sail home safely after that in spring and summer. So I had a lot of twigs and conifers, yes, but I also used a lot of berries. I, as I mentioned, I used house plants. Um, I forced narcissus and amaryllis indoors for my floral arranging. I also bought. I allowed myself a few cheats, and I bought. Um, Tulips from Alm Hill Gardens at the Pike Place Market. They are in Bellingham. They grow in high tunnels almost year round, organic tulips. So I felt that that was supporting a local flower farmer and giving me desperately needed color. <laughs> and, um, and also, uh, one of the farms that I profiled in the 50 Mile Bouquet in Portland, Peter Court, uh, they grow roses and lilies in greenhouses all winter long hydroponically and they sell you can buy their product at PCC and you could also buy it through the growers market so I you know I did you, you got to have some bloom color so I cheated a little bit but um, that project was so rewarding for many reasons one is I never thought of myself as a floral designer I was a journalist I was an objective observer of, and I wrote about other people who were creative but I was not one of them but of course it taught me that we all are artists and we all just have to uh, observe nature and sort of take our cue from what's in our own gardens and what's growing out in the wild, what we see uh, in inspiration on garden tours. Um, and so now I feel like I've channeled my inner florist doing this project for a year. <laughs> it got me unplugged from the phone, from the internet, from any distractions every day, every week when I was working on my arrangement and then I'd have to think about what vase to use and what the flowers were telling me about how they wanted to be arranged. Um, I drew from all my like college art classes in terms of all the things we've learned about color theory as gardeners. And um, <coughs> then I had to figure out how to photograph them. So it was a really good exercise in observation and med almost like meditation. So I hope you all will be willing to try it. It's very, I mean, one, one bouquet a week. First, I thought, oh, I'll do one a day. No, no, that was too good. One a week was fun. So this is uh, my little explosion in purple. And I would, I would say that this arrangement will probably look good for at least five days, especially if I change the water every day, maybe up to seven. Some things will have to be edited out, and that's OK, too, to go in and just snip, like, as these. I'm afraid that the, the geranium will start uh, geranium foliage will start yellowing. I'll just clip out, you know, what doesn't look great. Um, a little bit defensive, and I say, well, how long do you enjoy a farm-to-table dinner when you go out to your favorite restaurant? How long do you enjoy that bottle of wine? 45 minutes? Depends on how fast you're drinking, um, how many people are with you, but it's for a moment. And so wine and food are plant-based uh, delights, and we're willing to let those give us pleasure for an hour or more. 
And somehow these plants we expect to last for 10 days, and we're, we think they're junk if they don't. So I'm just <laughs> give you a little little perspective to think about. You know, ex enjoy the moment. Um, and they're they're going to die the minute they're starting to die the minute they're cut. So we have to just ex appreciate even the decaying process. I love that when petals fall off of my garden roses. Uh, and just just know that if you're using local flowers from your own garden or from a local farmer, they're going to be fresher and last longer than anything that's um, been imported anyway. So that's my sermon for the day. I know there was a church service in here earlier. <laughs> this is mine. And thank you so much. I can answer. How are we for time, Nancy? Okay. Good. Yeah. Wow. Thank you.